Just a quick demonstration of the Seawood PV150. The operation of the PV150 Plus is pretty much the same and this is rebadged as the Benning PV1 meter and probably some others besides. Around the back of my shed, um, this is one of my inverters which is currently off on the AC and I have disconnected the DC there. Just to go through the terminals on the back of the tester, um, these two uh, connect to the array. Um, these two can be measured for me used for measuring voltage, but in this instance, this one is our ref reference um, for the insulation resistance test. So in this case, it's just connected straight onto um, some earthed metalwork. Um, this all being one shipping container with the modules mounted to the roof, it's all earth through that. But before doing an insulation resistance test, you'd normally want to do a continuity test. So when we do an insulation resistance test, um, we are using the, the auto test feature here. And you can see that it's saying the left hand terminal connects to ground or the array frame. And then the plus and minus terminals connect to the string. So that's array frame or ground string here. And what it does when you push the button, it short circuits these two and measures the insulation resistance between these two short circuited and this one, which is connected to the earth reference. So let us connect the string in. So we're just gonna pop that in there. We will flick the tester on with its ever so happy noise. And the array is currently reading 83.6 volts. That's about right. It's a fairly warm day and we've got two modules in series. Like I say, absolutely ginormous system here. Um, we almost always set the um, insulation resistance measurement value using this button to 1000 volts. Most modules these days are rated at 1500, um, but the tester only goes up to 1000. Um, yeah it would be rare to not use that. So once we've done that, we just hit the auto test button. And hey presto, we've got our value. So this is the open circuit voltage, the short circuit current, and the insulation resistance of the string. That is the voltage of what's, of what's coming in here, the current when you short circuit these two, and the insulation resistance of earth measured to array frame. We now have a whole bunch more <laughs> equipment in the shop and I'm really hoping you don't just have a view of the back of my head. Um, this is how you do this test that we've just done if you don't have a solar tester. So step one, clamp meter. We can measure the string voltage. Put that up there, 82 and a half volts. Conditions have changed since earlier, that's fine. Now, you might be tempted to plug these two into each other to measure the short circuit current. That's a really bad idea. So we're not gonna do that. What we are instead gonna do is use this contraption, which is a DC isolator. So, plug that into there. This is currently off. We're wedging that there. And that into there. Then we've got our clamp meter here. We'll put that onto DC volts. It will always read something. So we're just going to zero that there. And then if we turn this isolator on, We can clamp around there and read a short circuit current of 3.28 amps. At least I hope you can read that. That's reading three amps. Okay. Now, whilst that is short circuited, we are gonna come over here to our tester. And we've got that on insulation resistance and pop that in there. 
So we're connected back onto the earth down there, like that in there, and then we can run an insulation resistance test there, and it's coming in at greater than 10,500 mega ohms. No, 1,500 mega ohms. And that is how you do that test if you don't have the right equipment.